Hello guys, welcome to another interesting video of problem of the day Geeks for Geeks series. In this particular video, I will explain the problem number of distinct subsequences. Guys, I would like to rate this problem as a medium problem instead of hard problem and the problem is really interesting. Let me start with the problem statement first. It says that you are given a string consisting of lowercase English alphabet. The task is to find the number of distinct subsequences of the string. Now one note is also given here that answer can be very large. So output will be answer modulo 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7. Now guys, first of all let me explain what exactly is a subsequence. After this I will talk about the given example. So a subsequence is basically a sequence of character where we are allowed to skip uh, some characters as well. Like if I take a string, let's say I have a a b c d e so this is a string and one of the possible subsequence from this particular string can be a c and e right so a c e is one of the possible subsequences but while picking the characters guys always make sure that you maintain the order uh, which is from left to right left to right this is very important guys like you can't pick any characters in the order e c a this is wrong so we have to pick the character from left to right so another subsequence can be uh, b d right so we can have b d and now guys total number of subsequence we can easily find because for each character we have two options so either i can choose it or not so two for this then two for this then two for this then two then two so total number of ways or total number of subsequence is going to be two raised to the power n right this is very basic about subsequences guys now the problem asks us to find the number of distinct subsequences now let me take an example so we are given this example we have a string which is gfg for this guys first of all let me write all the subsequences empty string can be one of the subsequence right i am not choosing any character then i can choose g after this i can choose gf as well then i can choose this gg as well right after this i can choose the whole string gfg as well after this starting from f so i can choose f then i can choose fg or i can choose this single character g so these are the possible subsequences and i am sure there is no any other because these are total 8 and 2 raised to the power 3 so these are the total subsequences of this string right but there is one catch in this see i have same subsequence two times right and the problem asks us to find the number of distinct subsequences so the total subsequences is going to be 7 instead of 8 right so guys this is what the problem asks us to find and now our output is simply 7. But one more thing is, you may ask that we have to write an answer modulo uh, 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7. So if you do 7 modulo uh, 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7, then this is again going to give us 7, right? The reason is whenever we modulo a number with a greater number, so let's say I have any number greater than 7. So any number I am writing G here, this can be 10, 20, 30 or 31 as well. So this is going to give me the same number which is 7. And this is true for any number like smaller number mod greater number is always equal to smaller number, right? Now guys, I hope the problem statement is clear to you. So let's talk about the solution now. Okay guys, before uh, changing the page, I want to tell you one more thing that why we always use 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7, right? So first of all, let me change the page, then I will explain you. Okay, so guys, I was talking about why 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7, right? So the whole question is, see, it says that answer can be very large. So the output will be answer modulo 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7. My question is what magic it does so that the answer becomes smaller, right? So see one thing here. For any data type like integer, we have a limit. We can't store any number greater than that. So if our answer becomes very large, like uh, cross this particular limit, so this uh, like the output is going to give me the wrong answer. So we have to handle that particular wrong answer. So now we have uh, like whenever we do modulo like x modulo y. So guys, what it will do is it will give me the answer in the range from 0 to y minus 1, right? So for any large number, for any large number, if I do modulo uh, with smaller number, so I can have smaller values, right? So this is the main idea behind modulo. Now, why this particular number? So we see two things while uh, choosing a number. So let's say we have to choose a number. For now, we don't know about this particular number. We have to choose a number so that we can handle the answer, right? So there are two conditions that we need to follow. The first one is we have to uh, like choose the largest number possible. Why largest number possible? Because I want to increase this range. For now, if I take the example of x mod 5, so I can have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like 0 to 4, I can have only 5 values. So if I keep increasing this number, so it will give me 
uh, like greater range of values, right? So I have to choose the largest number which integer data type can hold. Okay, this is the first condition and the second condition is the number should be prime. Why prime guys? Because if the number is prime, then there is a more chance that it will give me distinct answer only, right? So the largest prime number that integer can hold is this particular number. So that's why we choose this number in order to do the module, right? Now I hope you have understood this. So I uh, I want you to note this somewhere in your notebook guys because I'm going to erase everything now, right? Now for this particular problem let me divide the problem into two parts the uh, the main problem statement asks us to find the number of distinct subsequences right so i am going to divide the problem into two parts the first one is finding subsequences let me write finding subsequences and the second thing is handling duplicates right we have to handle duplicates because we are concerned about uh, the distinct subsequences only so let me write handling duplicate values right now guys first of all let me start with how we uh, find all the subsequences actually we don't have to find the subsequences we have to find the number of subsequences right so finding uh, number is I think better here right so now guys see I have one example here I am going to explain this particular example so for this example first of all uh, the first subsequence that I can have is an empty string itself because an empty string is something that if I don't choose any value then I'm going to have an empty string as the first subsequence. So let me write first subsequence here, right? I have one subsequence till now and I'm going to write the values here. So let me write one. After this, I will come to this character, right? So for this character guys, actually the idea is till this character, how many subsequences I have, right? So if I have empty string O and I have this as the first subsequence, so I have two options for this O. I can either append this O at the last of this subsequence or I can simply skip this O. So this will give me an empty subsequence, right? This is the first possibility if I don't include uh, this O and or this can give me O itself. So guys, I hope the idea is clear to you like for any string, if I choose a subsequence, so I have two options for every character. I can either pick it. I can either pick or don't pick. I have already explained this in the problem statement, right? Now guys, I have two options for this. So now here I am having two different subsequences, right? This is nothing but one into two. Why I'm writing one into two? Because I have one subsequence and I have two options for the current character. Quite simple to understand. Now I will come to this character, which is A, right? And now I have two subsequences. For these two subsequences, I can either include A or don't include A. So now I'm going to have two into two ways, right? First of all, for this, let me write two ways here after this two into two what is two into two so first one is empty string then i can have o this is the case when i don't include a if i include a so i will have an empty st uh, like a here because i have included a in the empty string or i can include a in this particular string at last as well right so guys these are the four ways so now these are the four ways after this i will write four here so now i will have two into four ways for each string here, I can have two options for this B, right? I can either include or don't include. Let me write all those. So 2 into 4 is nothing but 8 ways. So first I have empty string, then I have O, then I have A, then I have OA. This is when I don't include B. If I include B, so I will have B first, then I will have OB, then I will have O uh, like AB. After this, I will have OAB. Isn't it guys? This is eight ways right this is for b so let me write eight here after this i will come to the last character which is nothing but a and this is very important to understand guys why because i have two character uh, which are same right i am going to have duplicate characters now so see now i have two into eight ways which is nothing but 16 ways so let me write those 16 ways first i don't include a then i include a so i have empty subsequence then i have a then i have uh, like b then I have A, B. After this, I have O. Then I have O, A. Then I have O, B. Uh, then I have O, A, B, right? After this, this is when I don't include. Now, I am going to write the case for including A, right? So, see. First of all, I am going to get A for this. Then I will get A, A for this. Then I will get A, B for this. Then I will get A, B again, right? A, okay. Now, I will get A, B, A. Isn't it guys? Now I'll get ABA because at the last of this I'm including A. After this I'll write OA here. Then I will write, okay, my bad guys, I have written AB here. I have to write BA here, right? Now after this I'm going to have OAA here. Then I'll write OB here, OBA. Then I'll write 
O A B A, right? So guys, these are the total subsequences. And now you can see that I have some duplicate values here. What are those duplicate values? So the first one is this A. And the second one is somewhere I am going to have, okay, why I have written A here, guys? Actually, I have to written, uh, okay, uh, let me check it, guys, so that I can uh, see one more duplicate because I'm, I should have two duplicates here, right? So I have, because why I should have do, two duplicates? Because these two strings are first going to combine with A, so this will give me A and OA. And I should get A and OA one more time when I include this particular string, right? So where I am having OA here, and here okay so guys see uh here i should have oa right and now you can see that i am having oa again so i have two duplicate values i have to avoid these values right so i'm going to simply going to remove them and now the total number of ways that i'm getting are 14 this is very important guys so at this point we are handling so for now first of all let me write this particular case finding number of subsequences so I have 16 here now if I wrap this in an array so you can see that this is going to give me the uh, total ways right I have 16 ways if I don't handle the duplicates so how this works let me call it a DP array why I am calling DP array DP stands for dynamic programming which says that solution to problem depends on solution to sub problem like these ways number uh, depends on these ways this depend on these ways like I can write DP of n or dp of i equals to 2 into dp of i minus 1 isn't it guys because this is what i'm doing here right i have 4 here then i'm doing 2 into 4 equals to 8 then i'm going 2 into 8 so if i try to write the pseudo code then i will get 4 i equals to 1 i smaller than n and i plus plus guys there is there's a reason why i'm writing i equals to 1 right because i'm going to initialize dp of 0 equals to 1 why because empty string we have to take by default right this is not included in the string i'm going to start from o right now i will say that okay my dp of n is something dp of i is something which is equal to 2 into dp of i minus 1 i minus 1 and even i have to write equal here because from 1 to n i'm going to consider the string so each time i will get the character by doing uh, s of i minus 1 this is how i will get the character right ch but for now, we are not concerned about character because this is going to give me the answer. At last, I have to return dp of n, right? dp of n. Till now, we have not handled the duplicate values, guys, right? Let me tell you how we can handle the duplicates. So, see one thing here that we got this a and oa as the duplicate value. What is the reason behind this? So, first time we got a at the first index, right? And before that, we have these strings, right? You can see that I have an empty string and o. And if I append O at the last, like A at the last of these, so I'll get these two strings, right? Now, we are, we have these strings as well, right? So, again, if you get A, so again, with these strings, I will append A. So, I will again, up, by appending A, I'll get A and then OA. So, this is going to cause duplicate values, right? And this is what we are doing here. You can see that we are having this A and OA here and this A and OA here as well because of these two strings, right? So, if I subtract this particular count like these two string from the total answer then we can get the answer right so we have to do one thing that dp of i is nothing but 2 into dp of i minus 1 minus any repetition that we have repetition how we can get the repetition guys so see if this character is seen before like we want a map we want a map why we want a map because we have to uh, like keep track of the duplicate values as well like we have seen the value before or not this map is going to have a character like the character that i have seen before and the integer which is the last index of that, that character because if you know the last index of this character which is one so at index one i have these two values so i can subtract these values right so this is the idea now we will say that okay uh last character j is equal to map of map of uh like what I'll write here, I simply write here ch, right? But before that, I have to check if map contains. So if map of uh, like ch is not equal to null, right? If map contains that value, then I will get this index and I'll say that, okay, dp of i minus equals to dp of j, right? Because at dp of j, I have two values and because of these two values, I'm getting repeated values, right? I, I, here I have two values. So I'm simply going to uh, subtract these two values from the 16. So now I will get 16 minus 2, which is 14 as the answer. So guys, this is the whole idea. This is how we can handle the duplicates. But hold on. 
we are not storing the values and we are checking the values so here we will check the values as well i'll simply write here map of ch equal to like here i am storing the values right map of ch equal to i minus 1 guys this is very important why i am writing i minus 1 here because you can see that i am starting starting from 1 and i am checking till n this happens guys this problem happens because of we are storing this empty string as the at the dp of 0 right so all the index are shifted by 1 now so i have to do i minus 1 in order to get the actual index and that's why i minus 1 is the actual index here now i hope the problem and solution is clear to you talking about the time complexity so this is nothing but o of n we are iterating over the string one time and space complexity is O of n again, right? So this is time complexity, this is space complexity. Now guys, one question that you may ask me is, uh, why we are not starting with the recursive approach first, then we are going uh, towards the memoization. Guys, the reason is, this is the most optimal way that we are going to have and this is the first approach that comes to our mind. So if we do, uh, if you try to write the recursive approach, then this is going to increase the complexity, not just of the problem complexity, but the writing code complexity as well so that's why i explained this particular approach only right now guys i hope everything related to this problem is clear to you let me show you the code quickly so okay uh guys here i am having the code you can see that i have the c plus plus code which is using unordered map then we are okay guys one thing that i have not explained you because i think implementation is enough to explain this how we are going to do mod value right so you can see that this is how i am writing the answer here i am storing the values like index so i don't think we have to do mod here because guys index is not going to greater than uh, this particular value which is this value right why because we have a limit for the uh, length which is 10 raised to the power 5 i guess now this is the java code and this is the python code guys so this is all about this video if you like the explanation then don't forget to subscribe the channel share the video thank you